What is up guys, this is Jay here, J Media One, and today we're gonna do another unboxing for you because it's been a while, and because we got a really cool product today. I'm pretty excited about this one. I have two 3D printers right now. I have the Ender, the very first version, and then the Ender version two. And this right here is a little bit different. It's made by a company <coughs> called Flashforge, as you can see on the box. The cool part about this one is, this printer, let me lower the desk a little bit, but this printer right here is completely assembled, awesome. It prints really well according to the other reviews that I've watched on it. And I got it on a flash sale because of Cyber Monday, so I thought, heck, why not? I love 3D printing, I think it's one of the funnest things you could do because you actually get to design your own kind of stuff. And if you got any 3D modeling skills, you don't have to rely on sites like Thingiverse to get your models. You can model yourself, download it, uh, flip it to G-code, pop it in a slicer, get it out and put it in your printer and you are ready to print. This thing is pretty awesome because two things that I hate the most about the Ender printers, while they are great printers, they're entry level printers, the two things that I hate the most, one, I absolutely hate 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 bed leveling on those and it's not really that bad it's just more of annoying i'm a guy that moves my printers around um i like my printers to be in an area where they can print and they could be warm and they could be you know perfect i used to have them out in my shop the problem was it got too cold out here and the prints came out really really bad because of that so now i have them inside i have them at my office desk inside and they print a lot better however it's not enclosed, right? And so an enclosed printer is always going to print a little bit better. And you can use different types of filament like ABS and whatnot because it is completely enclosed and all that heat stays trapped in. So anyways, let's get straight to the unboxing here so you guys can check it out. It's a big box, right? I got my razor blade here. We're just going to cut it open from the top. The cool thing is, and why this thing is so big, is because, like I said, it's completely put together. If you have never put a printer together before, you know that there's some tweaking involved with a printer. This one doesn't really have any. Um, it does have a power cord right here, so we got that, and that's very nice. We got some starter filament, and it comes in this nice red color. Now, PLA does matter. Um, I've got some really cheap PLA prints like crap you have to really look for decent PLA out there and there's a bunch of different companies typically local companies I've found have the best PLA um, so you have your after sales service and we only have a couple tools here because it doesn't really require a whole lot it does come with a tube of lube it comes with a couple different allen keys actually one allen key it comes with a screwdriver a little screwdriver and then another hot head so that's very cool, but we're not going to need it to get started. And that's my favorite part. So right here, we just have some packaging, a little bit of eggshell top. Get that out of the way. We are going to need the razor blade again. We're going to pop that open. <clears throat> Bubble wrap's good. Make sure it's protected during shipping. This one came all the way from Georgia, I think. So it had to go a ways to get to me. And you can see there, there's a bunch of plastic on it. We're gonna move it off the table so we can get it out of the box. There she is, in all of her wonderful glory. So you can see how nice she looks. We can now raise the table back up so I can get a couple better shots on some of my other cameras here for you guys. And yes, it does come with a lot of plastic on it. That is a good thing. We want it to be covered. We want it to be protected uh, during shipping. It has some interesting features. So, I'm so excited, guys. This, this is awesome. Not to have the bed level. This thing's got auto bed leveling. Now, you do have to level the bed a little bit. I should be a little clear about that. Uh, but you don't have any of those knobs underneath there that have to be just right. Trust me when I say, if those knobs aren't perfect, 
your print is either going to not stick to the bed or it's not going to come out as good as it should have. Your, I spend anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes leveling my bed every single time I print because there was one time I moved my printer and I didn't re-level the bed and I could not get the PLA to stick to that bed for nothing. Literally nothing. Everything inside of me trying to get it leveled trying to get it to stick. What it was, was the bed wasn't leveled. And if the bed's not leveled, then the extruder head can't come all the way down and uh, start the print in the right spot. So we got a lot of tape on here we're just trying to get off so we can get to the exit point. Lots and lots and lots of tape. Lots of plastic. So we're going to flip it around here so you guys can see. You don't need to see me. You need to see this. So here we have the printer itself. We'll raise the platform just a bit. And you're gonna notice that there right here is a door. There's some plastic on the door, a little bag to cover it. It does have some magnets down here to help it stick. And so the door stays shut. Now, the coolest part about this is it has a lip right here. If you can see that, and it mates up perfectly. So there is no heat loss because of that because there's a, a little bit of a lip now there is no gasket of course but that lip is what's going to help you so we got some more of this stuff inside here we're just going to get that out this is the tricky stuff you don't want to damage anything so all right so now that that's out of there you can see inside and uh it looks great it's awesome I love how it is all together. It's amazing. I've built so many of these things that, uh, and let me get back to me. So I've built so many of these things that, um, man, it's just nice not to have to put one together at all. I mean, this thing is ready to roll right out of the box. There is a couple things you have to do. You have to perform the calibration. It's very easy. It goes down and checks each one of the points on, on the bed itself and make sure it's level. Now you still have to put a piece of paper under there and do the paper test, but you're not adjusting the knobs. The machine does the adjusting for you. It's got a button on the front. You tell it, go up uh, up one notch, down one notch, whatever, and it will, it will level itself that direction. Let's get around to, you can see it's all clear. It's even got a clear top, so you can see right through the top of it, which I think is awesome. So right here, So right here we have this door, okay? And so this door comes out like that, and that's where our filament goes, inside of here. You need a decent sized spool, you can't use a oversized spool, but I do know that on Thingiverse you can print an adapter for this right here that sticks out about this far, and that lets you use the bigger spools on it if you like. You would have a little bit of uh, area right inside of here where you can get a little bit of a draft, but um, everyone that's printed those things hasn't had any issues, so that's kind of cool. You can see that the feed is right there. There's a little arrow telling you how to feed your filament. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than this, guys. This is like, everyone says Ender's the beginner. This is the beginner one because you don't have to do anything. 3D printers are not plug and play, as most of you already know or assume. If you've watched any videos about a 3D printer, they're not plug and play, so you do have to tweak them. You do have to mess with your temperatures. Sometimes I'll go in there and mess with the bed temperature or I'll mess with the uh, temperature of the filament itself. It does have a degree range, so you can play with it a little bit until you get the perfect print. But you don't always want to be playing around. You just want to get stuff printed. And uh, I'm, I've been able to print some wonderful things with my Ender. Don't get me wrong. I do not dislike it. I just think the, the ease of use of this thing is definitely something to be talked about. Flip back over here. You can see the window right here. That's where we're going to... This is touch screen, so we can use this to do our calibrations. We can use that to do our prints. We can tell it to start printing from there and all that fun stuff. This is the overall view, so side window. Now, there's a cool thing to note here. If you look at the side window, if you look really, really close, and I'm probably going to have to open the door for you to see. So we're gonna open the door. And if you look right here, see where my finger's at? That's a camera. That is a cool feature. 
because it lets you see inside of the printer what's happening. Now, necessary? Not really. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with these. So with the Ender, what I do, what I specifically do, is I have a laptop, okay? Let me just show you a little bit of, of what I do here. So this is the Creality Slicer. I plug this uh, laptop in. I have this USB cable. I plug this into my USB on my laptop. And I, I then plug it into the, uh, the, the uh, Ender printer. And from there, I can print directly from the slicer to, I could send the print directly from the slicer to the printer. And I find that very cool, to be honest with you. Uh, it's a super neat feature. Now, the door is just so cool. I mean, this thing is just so cool how they build this thing. Um, there's a couple other companies coming out with similar printers like this, but I've heard nothing but good. So the bed moves here, and you can see that it's got this nice surface. No knobs, my favorite part. If you see here, there's these little clips, and that's what holds the bed in. Now the bed on this one is flexible. And what does that mean to you? Well, you can pull your prints off. So sometimes my prints get super, super stuck. And they're hard to get off of the bed. With this one, you pull the bed off and then you peel your print. You can just peel, bend the bed and the print's gonna pop right out of there. So that's awesome. Flash forge on the front, of course. Gotta wrap the brand. And then you got the uh, display here. So before we plug it in, there's a couple other features that we haven't touched on. Um, this thing also has a ethernet port. Let's just leave the cord there for now. So on the back side here, down at the very bottom, you could see a ethernet port. And so that ethernet port is gonna allow you to hardline plug into this thing. You can use cat five, go straight to it, cat six, cat seven, whatever the heck you have these days, they keep upgrading. So you have that, right? Now, if we rotate it again, you can see that there's a USB-A right here as well. Awesome. So we have several different IOs or outputs that we can use, inputs, outputs we can use to, uh, to get this thing rolling. The printer's, the printer's awesome so far, it's made its mark. Now, do we want to install the filament? I'm not sure if I want to use this starter filament. Why? Because if you look right there, there's only probably may, maybe five or six prints out of this thing. Depending on what you're printing, of course. I've printed some very large things. I like to go up. What I, and so I purposely scale my models so that they can print up because you seem to have more room that way. It depends on the size. This bed is kind of small. They make a mini version of this. Couldn't even imagine how small the bed is on this one or that one. But uh, this one's a little bit smaller than the Ender. The Ender's got a 300 by 150, I believe. So this one looks a little bit smaller for sure. Uh, but that's okay because a lot of stuff that we print, like I said, I, I purposely scale them up and I've got good at it over the years. Um, the good part about getting an entry level printer that doesn't cost a ton of money is that you get to hone your skills in because it is a hobby or a maybe not even a hobby, maybe you do this for your job, but it is something that you have to be skilled to use. You can't just plug it in like a normal printer. Although this one is probably, ease of use wise, the easiest one to get started printing on. So I'm not sure I want to use that spool. I have about 25 spools inside of the house, different colors, different types. Um, you can use all kinds of different things inside of this. I generally typically sti stick to PLA just because it does a really good job. And uh, I don't really see much use case for my situation to use anything else. If I know that a filament's gonna work, I don't like to change things that aren't broke. So we just plug in down here. This is about the same size as a normal power cable for a monitor. And uh, let's read the warnings just in case I can't turn this thing on with no filament in it. It doesn't appear that that's the issue. You know what, maybe we'll just spool it up. 
because it doesn't look hard. So the coolest thing is so far I haven't had to read any of the instructions. So it says open the filament cover by pulling out the cover handle. We've done that. Two, put the filament in the box and make sure that the direction of the filament is the same with the picture. So you can see here, there's little arrows. They tell you, go this way. Okay, wheelie wheelie goes round and roundy. Now, sorry guys, I'm a little excited about this one. Now we're gonna use this because who cares, right? Um, I'll print some cool things with it. I like, kind of like the red color. It's like a, almost like a little bit of a transparent look to it. I got some silica and then, no. So the cool thing about this is, Siri's going off on me. Shut up. Okay. So it comes with silica. It comes sealed because you don't want this PLA. I've, I've, I've actually let PLA sit out the bad, the bad kind. The cheap kind. If you find PLA super cheap, there's a reason for it. But typically, if you leave this stuff sit out and it's not real good quality, it'll get brittle and it'll break apart real, really easy. You go to feed your printer. Like, what the? It's breaking all over on me. So that can happen. Ender comes with these guys, little snips. Um, you want to cut this at about a 45 degree angle. So we're going to try to do our best here. And then we're going to load it just like it says to load it. So it wants us to start underneath, feed it up through. Now on the enders, you have a, a, a little clip on top that's spring loaded. You squeeze it and you can feed this all the way through to the extruder. You kind of preheat the front of it. You can see it come out a little bit. You know that you made it all the way to the end. But in this case, it doesn't seem to. Um, it says the yellow tag part is the filament intake. Insert the filament into the intake. Push the filament into the filament feeding roller until certain resistance is sensed. Okay. Well, I got past some certain resistance, so let's keep going. You can see that the wheels inside of there. Let me go down so you guys can see. Uh, there. You can see that there's wheels right inside of here that are grabbing it. I'm going to feed it until I feel it stop because that means that it's made it to the extruder. And that's good. So we're just going to keep feeding, feeding, feeding. There it feels like it's stopped, okay? So I think we're good. Now if you look on the inside, you can see that it's... You can see that that white, that whitish hose is now turned red, which means that it's fed through there. So we're good. And now I want to kind of spool this up the best that I can. Just going to stick it on the spool holder there. The rest of it doesn't say much. The last step is actually purely Chinese, so that's not going to help me. I don't speak Chinese. I don't know if this goes back on. It doesn't appear that it does. It's just gonna hang out. So we're gonna take the door. We're gonna pop it in there. This is the first time I've ever seen this. So even though I've used a lot of these, I've never used two things. Okay, so let's be clear. First thing, I've never used this specific model. Second of all, I've never used an enclosed 3D printer ever. So this is brand new to me too, but geez, this thing is cool. I'm just, I'm excited guys. Okay, so now that we got it there, I got it plugged in. I'm gonna flip the switch. I feel good at least knowing that the filament is spooled up in case we need it to be for some reason. It's turning on, let you see. Oh yeah. So it's coming on. It says the Adventurer 3 Pro. I did opt for the Pro just because it wasn't much more money to go the Pro route. Playing some cool music. Do 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 do. Loading, loading. Usually I always have a piece of paper around, but I just got done moving my stinking printers inside of the house. Literally. Sometimes I think it's funny that they don't include one. They know you have to use it. So. We might be able to use this after sales service kind. Basically, 
the entire point, let's go here. Okay, so the entire point basically behind the paper is that you're making sure that your screw, one, your tip doesn't touch the bed because I could hurt it. Two, you want to make sure that this has just a little bit of drag, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And then you move it to the next corner, a little bit of drag, next corner, a little bit of drag, next corner, a little bit of drag. Over time, I've got really good at leveling the beds because you do it so much, you get to feel it just, those knobs just gotta. Now, annoyingly enough, the knobs don't lock. So if you accidentally walk over there, like today I was pulling a print off of the bed and I tapped the knob, flipped it down, which actually lowered that side. Damn it, now I gotta freaking level the entire bed again. So I gotta back all the way through the process. Typically, you unscrew them all, bring it back all back up, put it to home position, disable your steppers, move the head around, make sure that it's just dragging. Do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Because you got to do it about five five times. You got to remember it's on a bed like this. So the front affects the back, the back affects the side. They all affect each other. This one's auto bed leveling. We shouldn't have that problem. So it says before using the first time, calibrate the extruder first. Okay. I don't know what's entails, what this entails, so we're gonna learn together. It says it's pre-adjusting, so we're gonna wait. Um, whatever that means. This is the first time I'm seeing it, so like I said, we're gonna do it together. While it does that, we'll take a look at what's inside of the bag here. So this is our extra hothead, All right? So if you look there, there it is. You can see the tip. That's cool that it comes with one. I mean, how awesome is that? 0.4 to 265. That's what that says. I'll let you see. Right there. Okay. And then we have our satchel of tube lube. And then we have one Allen key. I kind of like these rounded ones. They let you get in angled into where you need to go better. This is a regular screwdriver, Phillips in America. This here says beware of sharp needle. So I'm guessing this is if you run into some trouble, you can shove it through the thing. Ender comes with one similar that looks like this. So this is the Ender version, a little spring, so you can clean stuff up. Um, but Ender comes with a lot more parts, a lot more stuff to do. I'm telling you, first time you ever set one up, it's probably going to take you two or three hours. Okay, so it says click the arrow to adjust the nozzle so that it just touches the platform. So this is where we're going to do some adjustments. So, I always like to use this bad boy. Because why, how can you tell? Like, you can't tell that it's just touching the platform without a a piece of paper so there's no resistance right there when you hit the down button once you don't want to go crazy just easy ease into it still not moving and I'm wondering yeah it's in there I was actually wondering if the tip of the extruder was in there because sometimes they don't like Ender's I believe you have to put the tip on I don't remember don't quote me okay down one more we're still not there not enough yet, boys. We're going to go down one more. I don't want to go crazy. I don't, because it'll just smash it into the platform and ruin it. This thing's brand new. You can feel it adjusting, but it's... I mean, we're going at a tenth at a time. Ah! It just grabbed like a beast. Let's go back. Let's go back. It just grabbed the living shit out of it, so... We gotta be a little bit patient because it does take a little time. I think 0.9 is our, yeah, maybe one. It's grabbing it pretty good right there. Let's go with one. All right, next. Do you want to continue and complete the auto calibration? Of course. So it's pre-adjusting. Oh, thank the Lord, baby Jesus, cal auto calibration. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. This is a godsend, having this ability to do this. There's other printers that can do this, but they are extremely, insanely expensive. This one really isn't. Click the arrow to adjust the nozzle so that it just touches the platform. So now we're gonna 
kind of do it everywhere, all four corners. If you look at this, uh, hang on. Look how high that is. That sucker's way up there. What the heck's going on here? Getting a little freaked, but we're gonna keep it up. We're gonna keep it up. We're gonna figure this thing out. It's all the way at three, so I can I can see it inching. The last one was at one. I'm at point four. Holy shit, we're at zero. Negative one. Negative two. Negative three. See how I'm wiggling the paper? Just give it a little wiggle. That's how you know if it's touching. You can't feel it with your fingertip, it's too much. There's nothing in between it. You think about how thin a piece of paper is. We're going by the tenth here. Negative one. One, two, it just grabbed real hard. Let's go back up to one, one. Let's go to one. So you don't want it to be too far. That's the, honestly, it's worse to me if it's too far than if it's just a tad too close. Why? Because if it gets too far away, and I promise you this will happen, maybe not necessarily in this one, but the bed, the PLA will not stick to the damn bed. And it's got to go in a circle. Usually you're building a raft or you're, maybe you're just doing an outside layer. But either way, you have to build a layer first before it starts to print. And a lot of times, if you're doing a raft or just an outside layer, I forget what they call that one. I usually build a raft. But anyways, when you do that, it's going in eh, and then it's just kind of circling around the corners. And it pulls the PLA back towards the middle. And then you're like, well, abort print, abort print. We're, we're back at it again. I'm telling you, the bed leveling is the, the most amazing thing in the world. Just not having to turn those stupid knobs. I'd rather do this a hundred times over than have to turn knobs. We're going to get through this process. So it only made me do it one entire rotation. One. I can't tell you the time that I've ever done just a one rotation on a 3D printer to level the bed. Usually you do it at least 10 times. Trust me, there's far better experts out there than me that can show you how to do that if you guys want to watch a YouTube video. Highly recommend it. However, however, with this thing, you do not need to watch a YouTube video. It's already rocking and it's already rolling. The weird part is, is I didn't see a, uh, usually Ender sends you um, a flash, a little micro SD card, but they put it inside of a adapter so you can plug it into a USB-A. And I did not see one. Anywhere in this kit. So that sucks. But the good part is, the good part is that uh, this thing's Wi-Fi. And my ender is not. So it's got build here. Let's go down and see you guys can see. I'm not sure how good you can see that. So, hey, hey, hey. Okay. So there it says build, tools, and filament. I don't know what the filament says. Load, change, manual. Okay. We already loaded it. Maybe there's another step. Um, tools, some network. We're gonna wanna hook this up to Wi-Fi because I think you can print from the cloud, which is very cool. And uh, I definitely want to print from the cloud. All right, we put in our Wi-Fi password. She's connecting and we're connected. Okay, and we can enter our back button because we're good there. Ethernet is also an option. It says connect an ethernet cable. We're not gonna do that because I used to have an ethernet cable in the house. I used to do some gaming with it, but 
I got rid of it. I got, you know, Wi-Fi 6 now is so fast it doesn't really matter. There's a little hotspot. So you can set up a hotspot. That's kind of cool. And uh, then you got the cloud. So I'm guessing you have to connect to their cloud network. There's preheat network and settings. Inside settings, it's got a little status button. Shows you the bed temperature, the extruder temperature, and the load, which is cool. Uh, language, calibration, which we've already done, and homing. So we're just gonna send this thing home. Typically, before you start a print, you want it to be home. That's it. So the homing location on this thing is interesting. It's way up there. Typically on an ender, your homing is down in the corner, right close to the bed, right in the front. So it's just different. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. And go back to the beginning. Let's go to build. There is a little box, a little demo box on here, which I was hoping for. So we're going to build this little 20 millimeter box and see how it does. It's done. Let's pop this sucker out of here and see what we got. So there, see how it's sticky? It's so hard that it's actually pulling up on the, uh, the bed. So you do have these tabs that pull back and you can release the bed with these tabs, which to be honest with you, I am a little too lazy to do. So we're just going to peel up here just gotta get underneath it a little bit and it'll pop. They, they give you a little spatula typically when you get a 3D printer. This one does not because you can pull the bed out and the bed flexes. But like I said, I don't wanna go through the trouble of pulling on all of these tabs and dealing with that. So I'm just gonna pop it off. Okay. Now that I got it off of there, this is what it looks like. Very cool. And it did build it with a raft. That's this area right here around it. So this should pry off pretty de decently. And it does. And then we have our cube. And you can see how nice this thing looks. Like I said, high quality PLA does help. And this seems to be. And uh, I like the color of it. But it did a great job. I mean, look at that thing. There's hardly any, well, a little bit right there. You could see a little bit of stringing right there, but there's hardly any stringing whatsoever on it. I actually have a torch for this reason. So that you get yourself one of these little power probe torches, any of these little strings on, side, on the side here, you just burn them off. And they burn off pretty easy. And you're good. That's it. So that's a little inside trick I like to do. But uh, yeah, you can see how good of a quality that little brick was. So this thing does a great job. Highly recommended, guys. You saw what I did. This is set up out of the box, ready to go. You're not going to find many printers like that, at least in the cheaper range. This is about $599. You can get it on sale sometimes. Like I said, I got a smoking deal for Cyber Monday. I will leave a link in the description down below. If you guys like this video at all, you can support me in a couple different ways. You can like and subscribe, which helps. It helps you with YouTube's algorithms. Or you can click the link below to buy me a coffee because I love coffee. Thanks guys for watching and we will see you in the next video. Later guys.